what you know what what I'd like to really focus on this evening and and Teresa uh, very wonderfully brought up the fact that it is Jacksonville's bicentennial and uh, you know one of the uh, uh, one of the things about urban sketching is it's it's mantra is you know see the world one sketch at a time and we've all, all always talked about the fact that we should see our community and see our city uh, one sketch at a time as well. And it's really nice to, to record uh, history, if you will. And, and a lot of times that's through architectural sketching, that's sketching places, special places, um, certainly special uh, activities that happen within your community and city and the beauty of what we do as sketchers is we document and we document it quickly. We, we document it in a way that, that hopefully can be looked, looked back on and, and revered as a, as a moment in time. And to think about, uh, think about where you were, think about all the atmosphere related to, to where you were and what you saw and that sort of thing. That's always, that's always kind of fun. So, uh, you know, I, I chose a, a subject tonight. It's, uh, it's, it's Henry Clouseau's um, uh, design. Henry Clouseau was an architect that came to Jacksonville after the 1901 fire. And in 1902, uh, well, you, you know, many, many incredible buildings uh, began to uh, uh, pop up in our, in our downtown. Uh, it became a, a, a plethora of opportunity for architects and designers and city planners and so forth because Jacksonville um, lost I think 3,000 buildings, 2,800 buildings, something like that. So its downtown was 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 really decimated by the 1901 fire. You know, big big part of its history. But I wanted tonight to kind of celebrate the fact that maybe we can look back on on a little bit of history and and and, and do a little recording of some history ourselves. And I also wanted to go over a, a, a little bit of some of the reasoning why uh, is, as well. And and. Uh, talk a, a couple minutes because we're going to sketch tonight but I do want to talk a couple of minutes this was an Arbus magazine from last year uh, it was the annual arts and architecture uh, section and, and I, I, I had a, a nice article in that uh, in, in, in that book and uh, as a as what I like to refer to as creative activism and it just talked about how watercolors shape a vision for our city I thought that was really pretty cool and the building, the Times Union building, uh, was was one that 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 was uh, uh, that was, I think, part of our uh, our architectural heritage and culture. And it was decided to be demolished, and it's currently in a demolished state. And I'll get there in a second. But it was really nice to have the opportunity. Uh, and this was done as a plein air painting. So so Laurie and those of us who are part of the plein air group as well. Uh, I stood out there on Riverside uh, one Saturday morning and painted this, uh, but I'm thankful that I did. And, you know, you look back, you look back at the firehouse and this firehouse was torn down as well. Uh, that was on, on Riverside Avenue and, and, and the, the, the Doro uh, fixture factory, the landing, uh, all are gone. And they were part of our architectural history. And it, and it was really kind of a shame that, uh, that you know, we continue to, to uh, lessen the value of what our, our real history and our architectural heritage uh, could represent for future generations. But I wanted to, wanted to point this out and I, I'm doing it for a reason because those of you who remember our little sketch crawl uh, at, the, uh, at the Times Union building, some of you were there, but you know, this was, was, this was one of our little tone studies that we did uh, one Saturday morning, and I called it the Times Union skyline. Certainly, this is the Times Union, but all of the other buildings as it related to this, the skyline. And uh, I thought that was uh, that was a fun little sketch to look back on. So, you know, again, those of you who were part of that, uh, you know, look back and and just remember where you were on that hot morning. <laughs> and we sketched the Times Union building, and and uh, that will will be an indelible mark in our, in our memories. There you go, Lisa, excellent, excellent. And I wanted to show you a little something that I've been doing at my office, which is, uh, you know, I, I, I work hard, <laughs> but uh, when I'm on the phone or when I, when I uh, you know, have a, a, a maybe a minute, maybe two minutes, 
my office window looks out over that skyline. It's that same view that I showed you in my sketch. So I, I pulled out this, this sketchbook that I had and I wanted to record uh, uh, essentially the demolition of the Times Union building and just for grin. So these are all sketches that are done well under five minutes. And I'm usually on the phone. I'm usually between meetings or something. I'll just, you know, I just started going through this re recording, if you will, of, of what's happening with the Times Union building. You know, and I call it a slow death, <laughs> you know, the, they, where they gutted the inside and, you know, where, where the, the stuff uh, started to, to uh, you know, be demolished and, and, and uh, taken out uh, dust from dumping the interior. They actually gutted the interior and dumping out the side and it formed a cloud of dust. Uh, they, uh, they began removing the exterior glass and you can see the, the excavators and just the, the activity around that building as they slowly took it down. And uh, in this particular case, they took the facade was gone, the glass facade and, and the exterior walls. And I said it was one shell of a building and, uh, you know, where, where the, only the framework of that building remains. One of the highlights I, I noticed one week was the, the, they began to save the letters. What was interesting is Times Union was up on this top uh, portico or whatever this, this top section of the building was. And they, they took the, the letters not facing Riverside. Riverside is over on this side. They just basically crumbled them up and dumped them over the side. And I said, you know, that's kind of a shame. It's too bad they're not saving those letters for some reason. And then I, I saw the week of 325. They, they brought a big crane in and they carefully took the letters off of the side that faced Riverside. And you wonder if they did that for a reason. You wonder if they just did that to, for a show or what, but it faced the most people, but they took great care in, in saving the letters. Uh, and then uh, again, the, 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 uh, the slow demolition of the building, it was interesting that they actually brought excavators to the roof of that building and began mm. to push the debris off of the roof. And I thought that was somewhat hazardous in its, uh, in, in its construction methodology, but you can see the stuff gathering. Um, so you may not think I do any work and you know, you, you're probably right, but I mean, you, this is over a period of a number of months. And then, you know, to take the excavators off the roof, uh, I wrote a note here and I thought they, they use freight elevators. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. So, you know, they bring the crane in and they just lift those ex ex excavators off of the roof. Uh, and then uh, every children's uh, dream is, is to play in the pile. And uh, they had they brought these big excavators in and would, would uh, pull and move the pile around uh, and then load it in dump trucks and hauling, hauling it off and the piles began to dwindle. And then they brought this interesting machine to where it began to actually chew the concrete. Since the, the floors were exposed, which were all concrete, uh, and this building was designed actually to have three additional stories. So the structure was very sound, very, very strong in its sense, but they brought this interesting uh, uh, machine in that literally just chewed the side of the building. So you could see the dust and the dirt and the, the debris and it would chew one side and, and this one side collapsed, uh, the, outer, um, the outer vertical uh, support was gone and then that one side collapsed and then they would just come in and, and uh, begin to take the, the building down and it would chew one side away. You can see the shape of the building uh, certainly being distorted. And then it just became its core. You know, two, two quick sketches of, of what uh, would happen to the interior of the building, but you could see how it ultimately uh, met its demise. And then uh, I, I looked in, in uh, I looked, I came in one morning and out of that pile, there were two cranes, two excavators. And I said, I said two things. One, the real discouraging side effect of this building coming down is now I get to see the courthouse. <laughs> and the courthouse is, is just an architectural uh, travesty, but we, we won't get into that. Uh, but the other thing is uh, I, I, I looked at this as, as, as really uh, uh, buzzards, if you will, buzzards picking at a steamy carcass. <laughs> That's what I mentioned here because there was just nothing but uh, a debris pile uh, as they began to chew the last little fragments. And then the last pile of the building, the last little remaining pile, I just made a, made a comment that it was 9-11-like. 
so it was really the the life or demo of a building was was kind of uh, kind of discouraging to see that you know i call it the final pile <laughs> But, you know, we as urban sketchers, this is what we do. Maybe we see these little moments in time and we get to document them. You know, again, the toy trucks playing in the pile again. Um, the double header cleanup where excavators were literally back to back. Uh, looked, it looked like a crab or some kind of crustacean <laughs> that, was, that was kind of working through, through the pile. Uh, then there was actually a pit the, uh, up underneath where the building was. Once they cleared the debris pile, they, they were digging this, this immense pit and bringing in sand and dirt. And you can just see the top of the excavator from the bottom of that pit uh, where they began to uh, fill the hole, if, if you will. And really what's all, what's, what's there now are these sand piles on either side. There's a fairly extensive uh, pit where, where the building was. And uh, you know they're, they're trying to continue to, to not only fill the pit, but take down the remaining concrete wall. This was my last one. This was the other day. <laughs> Uh, just uh, just uh, as, a, as a, a, le a little weekly document. So I thought that was kind of curious, but, but always remember, you know, maybe one of these buildings that we're sketching uh, may, not, may not live very long. <laughs> so I wanted to just, just show the fact that how important it is for us to record our community and our, our, our heritage, really our architectural heritage. And that's sort of the beauty of what we do as, as sketchers. And I, I really, really enjoy uh in, in, enjoy that uh if you know when when and when and if we can all right well enough about that what what um, what i wanted to also talk a little bit about was uh the the day i, I got the call uh that my daughter uh had, had suffered uh a stroke uh in in denver i was actually conducting a, uh, a sketch crawl. And I was asked by my professional organization, the American Society of Landscape Architects, uh, I was asked to do a little uh, uh, walk downtown and, and do some uh, lead a sketch crawl. We had a nice group of, of landscape architects. I think we had a couple of architects that were there. And these are, there are, are folks that don't get the exposure that we do, uh, you know, as sketchers or as painters or as artists. They're professionals that should be sketching but aren't. So I put a little booklet together as a handout and I just wanted to talk about observation. You know, that's that's what we're all about as a, as a community, as a group. You know, I had a little bio on, on myself and then, you know, I asked the question as to why we sketch as professionals. You know, certainly to see better and, and it, our, it develops our artistic ability within our profession, uh, initiates the creative process, communication through visualization. You know, whatever, whatever. Uh, we sketch for a lot of reasons, and I, I, I aimed it at, at our profession, and and really how it became a relevant uh, piece of the design process and the observation and creative process. So I, I, I talked about some of the instruments of choice that I that I use, uh, and you'll see a few of those tonight. I, I love to to sketch with uh, not only a big pen but with a uh, a fountain pen and and the food and nib. And, uh, you know, when, when you sketch and you practice and you do, do a, a number of these, your style will, will, will literally come to the top, like, like cream. It'll, uh, your, 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 your style, uh, your interpretation of the scene, all will be a part of who you are as a, as a sketcher and, and actually as, a, as an artist as well. So just went over a couple of quick points as to what to look for. When you uh, when you get to a complex scene, you want to you want to simplify it as best you can. You establish some focal points and contrast and tone, and we're, we'll talk about all that tonight, which um, which is all part of the sketching process. I wanted to show some examples, and you, some of you have seen these because these were done on some of our sketch crawls. But you know, I talked about composition, to where you have kind of a, a, a U shaped composition with a, a focal element. Tone. How do you tone and, and, and create contrast in your in your sketches? Uh, you know, with darks and shadows and things, and doesn't show up real well on the camera. But you know, it just gives you an idea of some of the the thinking and style when we're out there sketching. And again, these are very quick. You guys know what it's all about. Then how do you add color? This is a little muddy in its in its shape, but this is the, the same sketch on Laura Street where I added a little bit of color. I talked about some examples of instruments. 
you know, a big pen, which I, I love to draw with, you know, just a plain old, it used to be 19 cents when Patrick and I were just young kids. These were 19 cents, but uh, they're, they're not 19 cents anymore. Uh, but they're, they're wonderful uh, instruments to draw with. Uh, you know, then I, I talked a little bit about the, the food and nib. Uh, we'll talk, talk about that when I start sketching a bit and then how you add color. And, and we did, we did this little tonal sketch. This was, this was an exercise we did of a building downtown, you know, just using uh, tones. And we're going to do that tonight. And we're just going to use one color tonight. And then uh, basically, you know, it, it was the end, but I, I love Michelangelo's quote of always be drawing and never waste time. And that's, uh, that's, that's really one of my favorite uh, quotes. And, and Anna, you, you, you guys just got back from a wonderful trip out West and, and look at what you did and look at what you recorded, uh, you know, at, at your time out there. And, and that, that was fantastic. And, and as, as um, Mike, one of our guest speakers said, you know, it's the beauty of, of, uh, of you know, the world of sketching is when you have to wait. So where 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 better to wait than in an airport? <laughs> you know, so you know you can get some of your best work done. So I thought that was kind of fun to talk about, and uh, I'll just take a breath here if anybody has a question or thought uh, moving forward here. Well, where can I get that book, Chris? Because I want it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I printed them at work. I just it's very simple. I can I can print up some more and get it to you. Actually, maybe we can do one with with uh, urban sketching, but. Uh, uh, it, it was real fun. It's it very was, informative. Yeah, well, yeah. thank you. I, I wanted to give them something. I, they, they got actually, they got uh, professional credits for taking the course. There was a four hour sketch crawl and, and they got three credits toward their professional licensure. So uh, it was, it was, I had to give them something. I had to leave them with something. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway. All right, guys. Any any thoughts or questions before we get into? Well, just, I'll side? just make a comment that, that I would like to get a copy of that book too, as well. <laughs> so, so you have a you have an eager audience. All right. Well, that's good. Well, I appreciate that. That's good. I have I have a few left over. I can probably get some reprinted at, at work. It's easy enough because I I controlled it, so I, I can uh, I can do it. If I'm not looking out of my window watching the Times Union building uh, come down, I'll try to print some more more books as well. Well, about the Times Union building too. I'll just very quickly yeah. just mention to you that I I thank you so much for that presentation that you just did. My dad retired from the Times Union quite a few years ago, and uh, that building I actually worked there uh, when I was much much younger. Uh, wow. for a little while and that building means a lot to to our family so that was very interesting thank you yeah, that was super cool to see yeah yeah well i really appreciate like that guys the whole idea of the time like the time that you put into it and then the connection of like showing showing us that because you know so many people like i did i that painted we you know we were out there painting it and then i framed that painting and it's so interesting seeing like the process the demolition and I was thinking about it. I was like, because I was thinking about it so much. And people, people, were, people that live over there didn't even know it was demo yet. No. And no. I, they, so they had me thinking that it wasn't demo, <laughs> and it has been demo. Well, the, so uh, the you know the the firehouse uh, that firehouse number five was just down the block from my office too, right there on the corner of, of uh, uh, Riverside and uh, uh, Forest. Is that by and, the YMCA? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. And, and, you know, that was one of my paintings in the Arbus uh, magazine. And, you know, I actually have a couple of bricks because I don't want our architectural heritage to be uh, uh, to be rock piles. <laughs> you know, and we, we talk, you know, great cities revere their architecture and, and every style of architecture, I think, is a gem of the, of the time. Some people say they don't know what architects were doing in the 60s because the buildings were so ugly. But look at the Hayden Burns Library. If, if we would have taken that down and there was a huge movement to take that down a number of years ago and we saved the building. Um, you know, so, so that was um, the, the, the chop house, the Calford chop house. Um, uh, when, when I was, had my office downtown, I actually led an effort to save that building because uh, Bostwick wanted to destroy it and, and take it down because it was costing him too much money uh, on the on the tax rolls every every month, 
and 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 I was on TV. I went. I appeared in front of the uh, the city council. I, I appeared in front of the historical uh, uh, committee and, and pleaded to save the building because Henry Clutho, uh, Jacksonville's uh, great one of Jacksonville's great art, uh, architects, had his office there at one time. So you know there was there's just a lot of uh, just a lot of historical uh, uh, reverence that we we need to we need to elevate in value than and, and we don't and we we have to learn to be a big city great cities and big cities have have wonderful uh, eras of architecture that they can uh, they can educate continue to educate people on so. I'm talking a lot about that, but it's a passion of mine, and I, I thank you for enduring. Uh, but I thought tonight, you know, this this building was one of Clutho's masterpieces. Uh, this was a courthouse that he designed right after the fire, and it was to replace an existing courthouse that went down in the fire. But I mean, when you look at this building, yes, it is complex, but the beauty of its proportion and 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 really its style. And, and since it's, it's, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous building. So I thought that we as a group, as, as urban sketchers, how, how nice is it to maybe we can pay our reverence, do our little bit of, of, uh, of, of um, uh, I guess, of, of educating and, and show of appreciation of maybe sketching one of Jacksonville's old historic structures that, that was torn down. And, and I believe, I think the year, it was late 50s, uh, might have been mid 50s. Those of you that are native to Jacksonville maybe can correct me on that. But that's when this building was torn down because there was a need for additional parking. And uh, to hear Wayne Wood, those of you who know Wayne Wood, is a great architectural historian here in, in, uh, uh, in, in the city, uh, to hear him lecture about this, the, 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 it should have been a crime. I mean, to take a, to take a building down of this significance and elegance and beauty. And uh, I think we got eight additional parking spaces um, for, the, um, uh, for the police, I believe, I believe it was. But imagine if this was still in our downtown. We'd be sketching here every Saturday morning, guys. <laughs> this is just a great, this is just a great, great building. So uh, any thoughts or questions as we move into sketching? All right. Sorry to take up the air and sorry to get on my bully pulpit here, but my, my, my soapbox. You know, this was the, the photograph that we sent around. And uh, I, I also wanted to give credit to the Jacksonville Historical Society and, and also Wayne Wood um, uh, for, for I, I didn't ask permission to borrow this, but it is a, a public, it is published and it's out there. It's all over. These, these photos are all over. But I did want to source the, the, the photograph if, if we could and, and to, to, to hopefully get caught up into a little bit of our bicentennial spirit. Uh, I've been in other places, uh, New Orleans in particular, where they had their bicentennial. And I tell you guys, it's a big deal. And, and I'm amazed at really how, how little, uh, as Teresa said, some people didn't even know about it. Uh, but, you know, a, a, a birthday, a, a 200 year birthday is a pretty big deal for a city. And it should be uh, celebrated in a big way. And uh, we're, there's going to be some activities uh, Saturday. I hope you don't get rained on, Teresa, but it's supposed to not be a really good day. Um, but, but, you know, to be downtown and to enjoy our, our history, our culture as a, as a city is something that all of us need to continue to, to do and, and, uh, and, and, and certainly operate within uh, as as uh, citizens, if you will. So anyway, all right, I, I, got, I have a couple of photos in, in, in for a reason. You can see the level of detail here. What, what I wanted to do, I wanted to make our, our sketches look very old tonight. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna sketch this building. We'll start it off and, and, and sketch it. And then using one color, and I'm gonna pick a sepia tone because it just looks, you know, sepia tones just demonstrate the fact that it, it looks old. <laughs> looks, uh, it, it, it looks like uh, something historic. So I want all of our, our, our drawings to maybe look like they're authentic, uh, whether they're uh, replicated in sketch or photograph or whatever, a sepia tone always gives it that nice aged form and, and sense about it. So I, I want us, I'd like for you, whether it's pencil, acrylic, pastel, 
uh, whatever you feel comfortable, watercolor, whatever you feel comfortable with adding a tone, uh, if you can use a sepia color, we'll do it. So I'm, I'm hoping everybody's ready to sketch if, if, they, uh, if, if, you feel, if you feel up to it. Everybody good? Yeah. Yep. All right. Square. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my sketchbook that I normally use uh, sketching uh, uh, outside with. And, I, and I, I always like to cheat a little bit when I do these. Uh, and I don't normally do that, but I'm, I'm sorry for it. But I laid a very light, uh, light line drawing in, in light, light pencil, uh, because I'm going to just jump with my pen. And actually, before this evening, before uh, Anna and I tuned in, I, I did a little pen and ink quick study sketch. Here, I'll show you that. Uh, and, and it was under, again, it was under five. But you know, when you, and you take the big pen and, and when you just, you just quickly just illustrate, again, you, you see the complexity of the building and you see all of the articulation and everything else, but look at how you can express it very simply. And again, this was this was probably three nights, if, if that. But I, I did that as, as I was waiting for Anna to let me into the uh, into the call tonight. So that's what we're going to do. What do you think? Well, I mean, I'm <laughs> Let's <excited>. go. <laughs> All right. So uh, would, uh, I hope everybody had the opportunity to maybe bring the sketch to life, whether whether you printed it or or whatever. Uh, I, I always, you know, I do love when I'm out there sketching with you guys, you know, I love my fountain pen, you know, it's a, this is a, a pilot fountain pen fine line and, and then I, I'll, I'll show you a couple, a couple of them. No, I didn't print it yet. Let me go print it. Yeah. Okay. That one, then I, I just I ordered a new one. This is a medium tip. This is a Conklin. This is a fountain pen too. This is really a nice weight, uh, has, has a nice, uh, uh kind of a nice, feel and, and flow to it you know the it, it's a it's, it's a little little thicker line uh if if so needed but this one is what i'll start the sketch with i'll start laying in you know the quick lines and i want the lines to be very expressive you know don't worry about going over them again or again and don't you know you don't have to be tentative you don't have to do this you just put a line and just figure it out then go from there whatever whatever happens because we're going to splash some color on here and uh, and and then see what it uh, ultimately looks like. You're gonna be you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. And then all of you know that I use the big Bubba here. Uh, this is the gas guzzler of, of fountain pens, and it's my food and nib. Uh, those those of you who who have seen me before, this is uh, it's a bent nib, and Fuda F U D E is is um, is uh, I think it's Jap Japanese for brush brush pen. And I love the fact that you can really vary your line weight. You can get uh, uh, kind of a medium line. You can get a, a, a thin line. And then you can get a really bad boy line. You know, when you want to lay the gas uh, to it, you can, you can uh, really, really make that happen. And a lot of times I will do the whole sketch with this pen. Uh, and, and, it, and it gives a, it's a real solid, um, um, a solid line it gives a real heaviness to the to the sketch sometimes it's a little too heavy so you have to be careful that you don't kind of overburden you know you might want to be a little more expressive and and be a little more ten, uh, tenuous or tentative if you will in, in your sketching technique so uh, so let's uh, let's start and you know again when you look at this thing it's basically a box you know when we look at the geometric forms I know hopefully some of you already drawn but it's just a box you can start there I usually like to start up top and then and, and then have an idea of where it is on the page. Hey, Chris. And then, yes, ma'am. Sorry. Can you leave that on? I'm going to try to take a photo of it really quick because I don't have one. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Just, Go ahead. Just, just, just tell right me there. when you're just... good. Okay. I think I got it. You got it? All right. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Just right, just, yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah, have no one problem. printed yet. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm gonna, uh, I, I don't know how you guys want me to do this thing, if you want the photo in or how, how you wanna do it, but I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and start and we'll, we'll start up top, a little finial up on the, on the, on the dome. And, and again, we'll, um, we'll, we'll see how, how things ultimately, ultimately work out here.
you know, I think part of what's, what's fun about, uh, about the ink pen, you know, even if you have a little shaky line and, you know, whatever, whatever else it's, um, it adds to the expression of, of the, of the drawing. And this is where everybody gets quiet. So I'm, I'm okay with anybody who may want to say something or talk about something or, or whatever. Talk and draw at the same time? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still learning the, 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 the chew, <laughs> chewing gum trick. Yep. So I just make sure it fits on the page at this point. Yeah, <laughs> that, and that's what you want to do. You, you, and, and, you know, there's a couple of ways to do that. Obviously, you can draw the box out. And I can see that this was this is going to, you know, the proportion of this this cupola on the building is huge. And that's I think that's what makes it so beautiful in its in its style. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, it, it's it's almost out of proportion. But there's a there's a, a beauty about it that that uh that's really really nice to see you know and just you know whether you put dots or lines or or anything it's just the i think the the more jittery the the uh the lines are i, I think the 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 more fun the the uh the drawing becomes Because one of the things we're going to do is when we when we paint this thing or when we uh, when we render it or color it. I don't want to say render because render it is almost too formal. Um, you know, we're going to obliterate a lot of a lot of this detail. So you you don't need to to really bog down in um, in too much in too much detail. Another thing I normally like to do too. I usually like to move my move my a book around and, and, and everything else. So try to get that, that dome. You know, the other thing, I don't know why I, I, I do domes. But, uh, man, they're hard to, they're hard to draw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, anything circles and round and everything else, it's... Yeah, this is a lot of shape changing. <laughs> yeah, but you know, don't try not to get too 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 bogged down in that if you can. Have you met me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen your work, Jess. I mean, it's it's wonderful. Thanks, but I love detail, and that's why I do these because it's forcing me to not. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I always talk about you know when I talk about detail to me details the easiest part of the drawing I, right. I don't know why that's so weird but it, to me it is because you can get so so bogged down in it i think it's just easier for me for my reference yeah if this detail's here then that detail lines up to that detail but if i try to do big and i mess up the big is all big does that yep. make sense Absolutely. You know, the good thing about, about pen work too is uh, again, the lines, the, the lines are, are full of energy. So you can go over them again, you can do, do different things with them. I mean, just, it's just a sketch. That's, that's all it is, it's just a sketch. Let's see, it's got a lot of stuff going on in this balcony up here. You know, maybe if we, uh, when Anna takes our, our picture tonight and we hold these up, we can, um, you know, I know the executive director of the Jack's Historical Society. Maybe we could, uh, we can post it with our, our, um, homage to uh, the bicentennial, you know? That'd be cool. Maybe we can get a little bit of mileage. Look, look at the mileage we got with the, uh, with the Orlick. 
that was a lot of fun, guys. With the well, what? It, the USS Orlick, when we went out there and, and painted that, those of you who joined us. That was a lot of fun, yeah. I got to Man, I went I later you, the next day. They were, they just were so appreciative. It was amazing. I don't know, you guys are probably out of, out ahead of me, but you know, just uh, just trying to trying to get uh, some uh, some thoughts into shapes. And look, Jess, I I love detail too. I could get bogged down in detail with the yeah, best of them. <laughs> And, I know. Uh, I keep telling myself, move on, move on. Yeah, and, and and you just you just say, okay, it's just a, a sketch. All right, so let me get over on this side. Let's see, we got our little cupola here. A little round thing here. And we got now what was interesting about about the, these photographs was this photograph, the, the one I'm using, uh, was one that when it was just constructed. And so the palms were planted and didn't have a, uh, didn't had didn't really, they, they didn't butt out yet. But you know, this picture, and this is a good one to use because this has the contrast. This sort of eliminates a lot of the detail. It's almost like squinting your eyes, but I like the fullness of the palms here. So I might, you know, where these, where these palms are in place, these sticks here, you know, I might just draw some some heads on these palms, and, and just uh, that'd be a good tone when you, when, you, when you think about the uh, you know filling in our, our colors in a little bit might be kind of kind of fun. You know, like right here, that looks like a, a a palm needs to be here. Because again, again, this is just going to be an expression. We're, we're, we want to just the color is going to cover a lot of a lot of our uh, our errors, if you will. Chris? Yes, ma'am. I, ha I happen to have a magazine. I think it's from 1943. And it shows Grand Central Station before um, it was changed. And oh, they were actually going to change the whole station. It looks completely different now. But it really was absolutely a gorgeous building. It was breathtaking. And I have the magazine at home and someday I'll show it to you and um, how ugly it looks now compared to what it used to look like. Yeah. It's a, such a grand building, you know, it was the grandest building at one time, you know, for whatever it was, it's worth. It was beautiful. That Penn Station, all of those, you know, and we, we at least kept, kept our, our train station, which I'm very thankful for, the Prime Osborne. Um, but uh, man, some uh, some cities have have, have lost uh, you know some of those beautiful beautiful pieces, which is just such a shame. Let's see. See, I don't, I don't want to get bogged down in the windows here. I'm just trying to go as quick as I can. I'm going to break out Big Bertha here in a minute and and really start filling in some some uh some voids that'll that'll be uh that'll be quite something here 
and then when you um, when you add the color, let's see what we got. We got one, two, three, four. One, two, three. What am I missing here? I got one here. I hate it when you find where you put a raw a line really in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I've got the same problem going on. I'm like, uh, maybe I don't want the historical society looking these over. There. Yeah, right. At least not for accuracy's sake. Hmm. All right. This looks a little light up here. Because I'm looking when I, I'm, I'm thinking of the sketch and this side is going to be my shadow side. So I don't need to really get into a lot of detail, but I'm going to use my, my big Fuda here. I want to get, I want to get this thing kind of laid in a little bit and then, um, and then break out the, the contrast. Let's see, we got some stuff here. And see. It's almost like close enough is good enough, you know, you don't have to get to. Let's see, I'm going to have another palm here. I need to put another palm. I got another palm here. Another palm here. I think we have a VIP guest joining us from Canada. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. Marek Zinski. Welcome. Hi, Marek. Is, is Marek joining us? <laughs> yes. Holy smokes, man. So we have a star within our midst. Oh, come on. <laughs> Oh, is the microphone on? All the smokes. Uh, you know, we all get concentrated. We get bogged down in trying to, to do this. Oh, right. Hey, hey, Merrick, you'd have been proud of my little architecture lecture. I, I uh, you know, I, I almost pretended I was an architect early here. Well, you are. You are. You just add the landscape in front of it, and that's it. <laughs> I'm adding. I'm adding palms. I'm adding your favorite, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? I was in, in, in Warsaw, just, you know, I just came back and uh, every time I pass through one of the main intersections, I think about you 
And that's <laughs> because we there is this installation in Warsaw that an artist did, and it's actually a palm tree in the middle of a busy intersection. It's like a nice. big roundabout, right? And, yeah. And uh, I think I sent you pictures of that, uh, you know, quite some time ago. And every time I pass in front of that, I think of you, it's like, yeah, okay, I did see a palm in reality before, so. <laughs> <laughs> so are you sketching along with us? No, I just uh, happened to notice the, the, the ad that Hannah put out and uh, it just, you know, took me a while to dig out the link, uh, you know, to truly, but uh, uh, I'm just, uh, I just came to admire and support, you know. And, uh, well, we, we, we love to have you, man. I tell you, we, we have a star within our midst, and for you to pick us up is fantastic. Uh, we, we talked a little bit uh, earlier. It's, it's Jacksonville. It's the city of Jacksonville's bicentennial celebration. And, uh, and, and, and we wanted to pay a little homage to Jacksonville's architectural history by sketching one of uh one of jacksonville's finest buildings that was torn down in the late 50s uh to add additional parking oh um, god but, <laughs> really oh. but, but oh. this this building was such a beautiful example of classical architecture and and uh you know we, our city had a great fire uh back in 1901 that destroyed thousands of, of, uh, of buildings and basically gutted our, our downtown. Mm. And um, uh, this was the first courthouse, uh, the replacement courthouse after the fire. So this one was dedicated in 1902 and it lasted until the late 50s uh, to where uh, they, there was a complex next door to it downtown that needed additional parking and uh, they tore the building down and they, uh, they got eight additional parking spaces. Incredible, um, huh? Eight. So, yeah, <laughs> so, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to play our part as urban sketchers and, 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 and just, uh, you know, the beauty of urban sketching is that we are recording architectural history it, it, all, all the time. And, uh, uh, it's it's nice to be able to to do that at, 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 at times, and we're just going to pay our little homage to some Jacksonville architectural history. So that that was the premise for for tonight's little uh, little effort. But man, we're really tickled to have you, and we're going to well, do a little. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh no, I'm just I'm just crushing it because I wanted to see you, you know, working and uh, and all of you working here, you know, the, at the time. It's fantastic to see you all again after after a while and uh, so glad that you are you know taking the the historical buildings of jacksonville and, and something from the past to to revive it at least on paper yep that's, that's fabulous yeah well we uh we'll we'll try to do our part and maybe we can we can get a little uh, a little attention to what we do as a as a sketch group you know this is such a such a beautiful building and uh so you know, I mean, what would it take for the building to be rebuilt? You know, I mean, obviously uh, you don't. Yeah, no yeah. vision. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it would it would take yeah, uh, vision, money, uh, you know, political will, all of the stuff that uh, you know the city lacks so uh, so great. Um, and and Merrick, because... everyone, everyone, I'm sorry, everyone yeah. in our group knows that I love this Fuda nib, and I always credit you with uh, with turning me on to the Fuda. You know, I, this... I, I heard that you blame me for everything, you know, that's what I, 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 I try. <laughs> but, um, uh, no, it's... I... I'm asking about rebuilding, uh, you know, this uh, this structure because uh, I came back from Warsaw, which was pretty much ninety something percent destroyed, you know, as far as the you know, except few churches that were still left standing, everything else was raised to the ground, and that's uh, an example of a city that was entirely rebuilt from the rubbles um, after the Second World War, you know, starting in '45. And uh, and it's standing now. And to from to to today to the current tourists that are coming in, 
it really doesn't matter that it's not the original. You know, it was built sort of like the original or even perhaps, uh, you know, enhancing the original in some way. Uh, so it's not, the, it's not the true structure. It's something that's only 60 or 70 years old. Um, wow. But, uh, but if everyone accepts it as a, you know, a, a sort of a representation of the past, right? Of the, whatever the castles from three, 400 years ago were. So if, if, if Jacksonville had a political will and of course the money and the rest of it to rebuild it, I'm sure it would have been a great addition back to the community and would then generate some central point to, to the city that uh, so many of the, North, of the cities in North America simply lack, right? Oh, that's that, that would be such a wonderful thought and, and idea. I mean, how wonderful would it have been if during our bicentennial celebration there would be some <laughs> unveiling of that idea, you know, and, and, and that, uh, that opportunity for the city to, to really pay homage to its, to its heritage, its architectural heritage, and, 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 and redo a, 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 a wonderful structure like, like this one. This, they, they say, Merrick, that the acoustics were perfect. I mean, the architect was Henry Clouseau, who after the fire in 01, he came down to Jacksonville from New York because uh, obviously after a fire, there's a lot of architectural opportunity in a city. And mm -hmm. he came down and, and did some wonderful architectural uh, uh, structures uh, and, and made a made a name for himself uh, quite quite remarkably uh, uh, in in Jack. So he's he's one of the, the the fathers of architecture, you know, in a, in our city, which which is uh, enough uh, enough to 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 revere in itself. Yeah, I see that. Well, great. You know, that's uh, that's a fantastic idea and great execution from what I see so far. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's good to see you all <laughs> hard at work. And uh, <laughs> sorry for crushing your meeting here. And your no. event, you know, I, but uh, I just figured I, it's now. So I got to check it out. So here, here I, know. I am. Please, uh, Eric, never be sorry. When are you coming back? Yes, crash more, crash more often. Okay, yeah. all right. Uh, yeah, now that I, I, I know that you guys have this thing, um, it's just, uh, it's just yeah, easier. Thank you, Hannah, for posting the, you know, the, the information on, uh, on Instagram. And also, uh, I eventually found the link on Facebook, so that's good. So, yeah. Uh, I sent you a, a, a message, Hannah, but yes, never mind. Yes, sorry, okay. I, I no, saw no, it. No, I, that was just a, a couple of minutes ago. So. <laughs> all good. That's fantastic. Uh, well, uh, you guys, hard at work. Uh, I'll, I'll just wave goodbye from Toronto, Canada, and I'll see you another time, okay? Sounds good. Well, Merrick, it's awesome to see you, man. It's, uh, it, it's great to see you. And, and you know, it, those of you who are unfamiliar with what Merrick does, man, follow Instagram because he's, uh, he does numerous lives. He's, uh, he's a, a much... Uh, 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 a much desired speaker on podcasts. Uh, he's a great spokesperson, one of the really world-renowned urban sketchers, uh, and and uh, he's he's wonderful to to have as an ally and a friend to our group for sure, Merrick. And it's it's really good to see you. I know you've been traveling a lot lately, and it's good to see you getting back on the lives. Right. Yeah. Thing, but, yeah. But, and don't forget that I'm the reason you spend money on your food at home, you know, so you can blame me. <laughs> yeah, it, was like 30, it was like 30 bucks. I mean, you know, it didn't put me out too much yet, but it's an awesome, it's an awesome pen. But uh, I know. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Fantastic. let's get together sometime. And anyway, just yep. just chat about things. I'd always love to connect. And you, you know, you're, you're always well, welcome here. You're, you you're certainly a, you're an ad hoc I, member of USK Jacksonville. I, I know. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm at this time. Thank, thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you, Mary. Thank, bye. thank bye. you for joining. Bye. bye bye now. Bye. All right, I'm fiddling. What are we gonna do? <laughs> All right, now we're gonna add color, guys, because you know this is just uh, again. If uh, if everybody is is everybody at a point they want to just add some uh, add some color. No, yep. I ruin it. Without. You guys go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Time to do something different. Yeah. 
let's do it because I know I know uh, I know Patrick probably has two or three sketches already uh, I, done. But <laughs> have one one overworked. Yeah, well, that's why I could have very very easily overworked this building, and and I didn't I didn't want to do it at, at all. But I'm gonna everybody if you have like a sepia tone, and uh, and want to uh, want to want to use that as your basis of color. Let's uh, let's do that because I love I love the sepia. I love certainly the the the, the feel of what uh, what sepia does for us. Let's see, I'm gonna put this. All right, let's see what we got there. Now, what I'm gonna do this side, this side is gonna be my, my darker side. Uh, and then I'm gonna see what ultimately happens to the sky. I'm not quite sure yet, but I'm just gonna just happen to go and, and see where it, see what where, where things happen, how things happen. I tell you the great thing about uh, already I've, I've been outside the lines. I mean, Doug on it. You know, for those of you who know me too, they they know that the the uh, my story. I failed second grade art because my teacher said I couldn't stay within the lines. And uh, I, I tell people all the time, I never have covered colored within the lines since. <laughs> the second grade. I mean, that's pretty harsh. How do you fit? Like that's so messed up. That to fail yeah. you in second grade art, like yeah, it, it marked me for life. <laughs> it would have marked me too. I would have been devastated. <laughs> well, that was back in olden times. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We were chipping rocks back then. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> olden times. Yeah. Oh man, it, it, these these little tonal sketches are are really fun. Boy, it's so nice sometimes not to even to to think about color, <laughs> but I want to try to think of how I can how I can make this thing interesting because you know if you just add one one color, creates a little bit of boredom. So we have to be real careful uh, how we want to want to illustrate this this thing. Darker because this is dark here. Dark my palms are darker. You know, guys, it was it was nice to have Mary join us. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, that was nice. Some shadow lines in here. We have a little tone, a little tone here. Tone there. You know, Lori, as a kid, I had the opportunity to go through Grand Central Station. We used to, we used to take the train from uh, from New Orleans to Vermont as as a as a kid, and uh, man, that was really quite a quite a place. Well, I have a lot of New York stories to tell. Yeah, we'll have to get you on the pulpit sometime. Yeah, really. You won't want me, you'll want me to shut up very fast. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, grow up very fast going in and out of New York. <laughs> I remember my dad telling us, hang on to your suitcases when we, when we got there. Because uh, everybody would come up and say, may I take your bags? And they literally would. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when you're dealing with one colors guy, you have to look at kind of three tones. You, you look at look at your strong um, your strong darks and, and your mid tones. And I'm not using a very small brush, which is which is good. I want I want that to to not inhibit inhibit me at all either. I want to be a little looser and a little more fluid in, in some of the, the marks here. 
I decided to use hot pressed paper tonight. So I <laughs> oh. decided because, you know, it's like quick. Hot pressed paper kind of absorbs the paint really quickly. You have to get oh, it yeah. on there. You yeah, have to be committed it. to it. Yeah, you do. That's, that's brave. Good, good for you. Let's see. We got another little band. I'm trying to think. We ought to be pretty close to being done, guys. We're done. I'm teaching a summer school, well, like summer watercolor class. So I'm excited because then I'll show them what I did tonight. Um, Cause I told them about, even though like it's like middle and high school. So some of them are like interested and some of them are like, yeah, whatever. So I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. interesting to see like that dynamic of like adults being interested versus like kids are like, uh, oh, okay then. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I want to be an entrepreneur. I don't know. <laughs> they're still trying to figure out like what game they're going to play tonight so i have to like you know be aware of that too but it's exciting at the same time it's like a totally different perspective That's so really now I'll show them what we did tonight show them on tuesday tuesdays it's I'll like one them. kid you'll be eye-opening and the next you'll be like whatever <laughs> <laughs> no and it, it literally is like a second because like some of them are like let's go to this class. Well, I really, I really wanted to get that class because it seems like they're really loud and it's a lot of stuff happening over there. And I'm like, Oh God, kids. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, so I'm trying to get them, I'm trying to impact them to see like something as minimalistic as, as this, my small impact will definitely, you know, channel something for them in the future. They just have to be open to recognizing it. And a lot of times it's hard to recognize it at a very young age, you know? So um, that's one of my goals to try to get them to see what they can do just in general, even if it's not being an artist, just what they can create and what they can do in the future and using that to develop their own, you know, their own choices in life and see what happens, so. Love it. Anytime we can influence the the youngsters, that's that's a great thing. Yeah, definitely. Getting close to being done, guys. What do you think? Yeah. What time is it? Okay, it's 9.15 too, so we got, yeah. So does our building look old enough? Oh yeah. I always like leaving a little bit of white too. You know, I like my, my lightest tone to essentially be white. Yeah. Yeah, I still haven't got it with the watercolor. I'm still working on it. <laughs> it's all right. Watercolor controls you, Lisa. Just always remember that. It controls you. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you do you not can, control you it. You can guide it. You can't control it. <laughs> yeah. That's the beauty of it. Yeah, I love watercolor. Oh, man, I don't know how you guys, Patrick, I don't know how you paint the oil, man. Me either. <laughs> Come on. And your, your paintings are so amazing. All you guys, Lori, all, all, you, all you oil painters. Oh, no. It's just fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Not just trying fabulous. to me. <laughs> 
No. I mean, you look at the body of work, you know, it's, it's awesome. But, you know, this is, this is like a little different, this is a little different animal, you know, this, this urban sketching stuff. Uh, you might have ruined me because I went to the zoo and I was with going to go with the, the uh, pastel group. And then the urban sketcher group is like, oh, no, no, I want to go urban sketching. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's like, oh, so bad. I just like the idea of these little sketches. I think it's more freeing for me, who's always been so detail oriented. I think it just makes me want to do more because I wouldn't do it because I would get overwhelmed by the idea of a whole painting and the whole packing and the whole. So. Love it. Sure. You know, it's fun sometimes this sort of frees you up because you don't have to get bogged down in colors and color selection and, and a blending of colors and that sort of thing. It's just literally a tone drawing. And that's uh, sometimes that takes a lot of the guesswork out of uh, what you're trying to uh, do. I think like compared you get, to golf, you know, yeah, the less you get more clubs, yeah, yeah, the less clubs in my bag, you know, the less decisions I have to make. Okay. You get more surprises that way. That's right. I like the surprises. Absolutely. All right. If I sit here any longer, I'm going to overwork this thing. So. But you know, again, how long how long did we sketch, Lisa? Did, would, would we sketch 45 minutes, maybe 30 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I don't even yeah. think long. Yeah. I mean, I yapped for a while, so we always like it when you yap. <laughs> Me too. I like it. <laughs> mean it. That word vomit is a good thing. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just ask Chris Allen. He has to deal with it all day at work, man. He's my, <laughs> my fellow architect. <laughs> hey, Chris. Is Chris? He's not here today? I, I think I thought I thought I saw him earlier. Are you still on, no. Chris? Yeah, I'm on. Yeah, I, I don't know if you caught my architecture lecture at the, at the beginning, but if you have anything to add, you know, I love this Clutho classical architecture courthouse that Jacksonville decided to tear down in the late 50s, but I wanted to just uh, pay homage to it, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it's great. It's really nice Beaux-Arts building. Uh, fantastic. A lot of great moves, the rusticated base, which you're not emphasizing there, but you know, that beautiful rustication to create that first story with yep. the arcuated windows. And then they change styles up above where you introduce the pediments. So those certainly knew and understood his classical references. It's really nice to see. Spoken like a true architect. <laughs> Very well said. I just said there were those fancy things or heavy things. I didn't have any technical term for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, when I was a kid, it was buildings like this that inspired me to go into architecture. because They're just so wonderful, sort of decorative style. Awesome. All right. right. Are we ready to do a little show and tell? Yeah. I can't wait to see. I can't wait to see y'all's work. This is what's so. This is what's so exciting to me. You know, this is this is really fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think I'm done. What's the consensus? Looks good. Yeah, it does. Beautiful. Uh, no, I mean, I love your stuff. Beautiful. Beautiful. Shocker <laughs> there, Chris. I knew it was going to look good. It, it always looks good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quickie. That's how, that's how I like them. But, you know, it simplifies the thought process is when you, uh, when you do the, uh, when you do the one color. 
Well, Anna, why don't you go around the room and have everybody just spotlight and let's see, see what you have. Sounds good. Who wants to be the yeah. first one? Teresa, yeah, Teresa let's Teresa. see what you got. Okay. All right. So I've been using this uh, black wing pencil a lot. So I like the way it looks like. Can you guys see it? Oh, yeah. 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 Nice. I knew it. I knew it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's nice job. Very nice. So, is the black wing pencil? Is that a real dark? Is it like a nine B or something? Or yeah, it's like a really dark um, pencil. It's like a matte, so it looks kind of matty. But okay. I like the the fact that it doesn't mix with the colors that I choose. I can do an even lighter color, and it still looks the same, and it doesn't come off and you know, it just, it gives it a totally different feel to me. It does. Okay. Black wing. Black wing. Yeah. I got that. I, I got that pencil from uh, Paul, either Paul, I'm saying either Wong or Wang, but he's a Singapore urban sketcher. Yeah. So Paul he Wang. Uses, yeah. yeah. So he uses yeah. this all the time. And like, if you look at some of his videos, he always uses this. You can actually draw into the paint with it. He'll move the paint around with these mm -hmm. pencils and everything. So I'm addicted to it because I've and I've, I met it when I was in Amsterdam too. So I'm I'm addicted to the pencil. Period. So excellent, excellent work, by the way. Thank you. Ah, really. Please All right. It. Who's next? Mm -hmm. Just go ahead around the room. I, I it's like it. the kiss cam. You know, it's the kiss cam. <laughs> Just hold on. <laughs> hey. Oh man. All wow. Right. Those are wonderful. Wow. Very nice. Oh, yeah. Excellent, Chris. Nice job, Karen. Beautiful. Yes. Really <laughs> Thank nice, you. Karen. Wow. Say, right. so, CJ, I see where you get your architectural talent from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably so. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Thank yeah. you. Barbara. Oh. oh, nice, Barbara. Oh, look at your perspective is so good. Very nice. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you. I don't know if you can see it. You know, Barbara, you talk about you, you talk about like lagging behind and oh, I got to catch uh, yeah. up. And that's the thing, but that's you know that's a great style in itself. <laughs> you know, that's a great expressive drawing, and you know you need to you need to continue with that that you've got the proportions of the building you've got the essence of the building that's that's really cool i, I don't know if i'd do much more to that I well i while you were talking about selecting people to put this on i'm trying to throw on some color on the <laughs> <laughs> pressure nice okay. very nice thank you for sharing that okay. oh okay which one is that who else? Who else is ready? Let's go around the room. How about Karen? Okay. Let's go there. Oh, you need to zoom in on that one. Hi, Chihuahua. Wow. Nice. Oh, that's nice Beautiful. and bold. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's nice, right. Karen. Really nice. Beautiful, Karen. Very I nice. love that sepia tone, guys. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I don't know if I had sepia or not. I just used a uh, burnt sienna. That's perfect. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's perfect. Very good. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you for that. No. Lisa. Okay. Let's go with Lisa and then with Jessica. Um, uh, Lisa. Oh, that's great. There you go. <laughs> you got some good darks in there. I like your contrast. Uh, so, mm. so, what are you talking about? You did watercolor scaring you? It doesn't look like it is. I'm still working on it. I'm this week. I did. Um, what did I do? Fifteen washes just to try and figure out how to do a wash. Nice. That's beautiful. Thank you. Cool. Love it. That's great work. I would have loved to seen one in oh, past. Okay, oh, then oh, there's Jess. Jess. Oh, Jess. Sorry. Let's. Okay. Beautiful work. Let's put it. You got a spotlight miss oh, detail wow. here. Oh, nice, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Very nice. 
Good awesome. brown on brown. I started in with this thing. Oh yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. like a brown brush pen. Brilliant. I was trying to yeah. plot. I and then I lost all my detail when I got it wet. <laughs> Is it, it wet water? Like that? <laughs> okay. Yep. So then I went back in with this this guy, which I also love. If you couldn't tell, I love things that bleed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If yeah. They bleed, they're they're my favorite. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> they do a lot yeah, of the work for me. That's nice, you know, a smaller scale uh, sketchbook as well. You you really you really captured it there. It's really well done. Thank you. Yeah, very nice. Um, we got Laura. How about oh, Patrick? All right, all right, Patrick. Make us all feel bad. Oh, oh, oh. Way to go, Patrick. Uh, <laughs> Beautiful. Nice. Nice, yeah. very nice. And a fountain pen with uh, some brown ink and uh, the water brush. Excellent. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent style. I, all I could say, Patrick, is, you know, whatever you touch turns to, to gold. You know, <laughs> or in this, in this case, sepia. But, but I mean, your, your style is awesome. You know, it's just an awesome oil painter and, and detail. And uh, I love to see your watercolor work. It's, it's just amazing. Really, oh, thanks, Chris. Yeah, it's all fun. Yeah, good for you. You get extra points for wearing the T-shirt. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Who else? Who else? Who else? Come on. We got Lori. Where's Lori? Right yeah, Lori. Come on. But I put uh, oh, Connie. Wow. Connie. Oh, Connie, that's nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very yep. nice Thank you. <laughs> Can you awesome. spotlight Connie? Mm -hmm. uh, keep it up there, Connie. Let me see the mm -hmm. thing. Very nice, Connie. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I like my wires the best. There you go. <laughs> I like <that> <laughs> well thought out. That's beautiful. Yeah. That was fun. Thank you. Yeah, that's excellent. You know, you talk about uh, there's there's a, a the great watercolorist uh, Joseph Zabukic uh, from uh, Australia. He says he, he loves the city entourage and it's wires, it's cars, it's stuff, it's signs, it's, you know, all the stuff in the, that, that are, that clutter, uh, you know, a scene, that's what he loves to paint. So yeah. that's a neat, that's a neat observation. The more of that I think we can put into our, our sketches, the, 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 the more authentic they look. Yeah. All right, Lori, what do you that's got? That's fine. Oh, me. Oh, oh Lori. Back up, Lori. That's very good. Wonderful. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very, that very, is, very nice. If you tilt your head, it looks better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh my God. That is fantastic. Great. Wonderful. I love I love the boldness of that. I mean, that's some confident strokes there. That's that's yeah. outstanding. Well, thank you. Very well done. Very well done. Kind of like the look up angle yeah. that you have. <laughs> yeah. That was cool. Who else do we have Debbie? Here? Debbie? Oh, yeah, there we go. Let's see. All right, Debbie. Oh, oh, nice. 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 That's beautiful. Wonderful. Very good. Wow. Um, Very nice. Thank you. Man, I'll tell you what. CJ, they're 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 tearing up the architectural world. <laughs> yeah, they are. It's great. Okay, Jeanette, you're next. All right. I'm like I got half a building in there. You guys are all <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, that's outstanding. <laughs> and the stuff started blurring a little bit, but but yeah. Yeah, but you know that's that's part of the character as well. You know, don't oh, yeah. don't worry about your blurring or or bleeding or any of that. You know, back to Jessica's point. You know, she likes it, that that bleeding that edge condition, which is really cool. You know, just a, yeah. a diversity of edges, soft edges, hard edges. That's mm -hmm. a nice piece. Yeah. Thanks. Who's left? That was wonderful. I'm going to show. Mine. Anna. Oh, there you go, Anna. Oh, oh very nice. Yeah. Color in there. Wow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anna, that's spectacular. So much personality. Good job. I, I think it's very yeah. practical to use one color. I, yeah. Like especially like for traveling or like there is no excuse. 
Yes. <laughs> I do, yeah. yeah. You know, you're right. And, and, you know, as we mentioned earlier, don't get bogged down in color selection and worrying about color. You know, when I'm, when I'm painting, I, I'm always worrying about what, what do I have to blend, what's blending here, there, whatever. This is so much easier. Yeah. <laughs> you're, just, you're just doing tone studies. You're just looking at, at your, your light, medium, and dark. And how can you create contrast and how, you know, how best to, to do it? This is, this is fun. It's fun, guys. Did we get everybody? The, the, uh, as a point of interest, the originator, Camp, Campanero. Uh, yeah, out of, Gabby? He, Gabby. Yeah, Gabby. He's using nothing but blue right now. Yeah. A single yeah. pen and, and then nothing but blue. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. But it's great because you can hit your contrast. You just vary your, you know, your tone and your your amount of paint or color that you use. It, it really takes a lot of the uh, the difficulty factor out. And and so when you're if you are sketching and you're sketching quick, just take a one color, grab any color, and just use a one color sketch. And it's just fun to see it see it evolve. Let's take a look picture. Yeah, let's hold them, hold them all up, guys. Let's get them. Uh, let's make Merrick jealous. <laughs> okay, is everyone, everybody is ready? One, two. Oh, wait, wait, okay. don't do it yet. Okay, one, <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, let, let's, okay, one, two, three. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my water ran. <laughs> well, Lisa, I wanted to I wanted to thank you and Anna. You know, as I said in the beginning, this is this has been a great break for me. So I appreciate it. I want to get back in into sketching and painting again. I've had a little bit of a hiatus, uh, and and this is always fun. This is a great group, and and just think, always think that it's just a sketch. You know, it's not a piece of uh, artwork we want to hang in a Louvre somewhere or hang in an exhibition. It's just a sketch. So every sketch is a great is a is a great rendition of our thoughts, our styles, our personalities, and and certainly our communities and cities. So it's uh it's it's fun to do. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. This is a nice uh, this is a nice break. I want to get back out there with you guys. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. You can come, yeah. you can come Saturday, good. Chris. You can come hang out with me on Saturday if you want. I'll be I might, I might try to do that. To do that. <laughs> so one of the I'd like uh, to be able to do that, Teresa. I won't be able to, to get there this weekend, but that sounds great. Thank you. Well, we'll uh, so Anna, when you post this, uh, we'll tag the uh, historical society and 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 also Jacksonville's uh, bicentennial. Tag that and see if they can repost as our, uh, you know, our homage to uh, to the Jacksonville's architectural history and heritage. So I will. Uh, yes, we're, we're doing our part. So absolutely. Well, guys, this was fun. I was expecting to go to ten, so I'm going to let you out early. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Thank you, Chris. Good night. Thanks again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. 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 B